Can you believe these little beauties are already in bloom? It is not springtime yet, but here they are. That's amazing to me. And springtime weather around here means one thing for us. The orchard is gonna require more work. It's pruning season. Usually that means that our hands are gonna be aching. But this year, we've got something different planned. Well, you've probably already seen Japan using that fancy pruner that I bought for. Pruning wears your hands out. It's really rough on your hands. We have almost 500 trees out here, and by the time we finish pruning, her hands hurt for days. So I went ahead and bought her that pruner, and she liked it so much that I reached out to the company, and Comox sent me another one to try out, a little bit different version. It's got a battery uh, meter, and it's got a counter on there. And I'm gonna put this thing to the test, and at the end of the day, I'll be able to give a pretty good review on it. When it comes to our orchard, Jafana is definitely the boss. She has a green thumb. She knows exactly what she wants done with the trees. And when I'm helping her out, I have to stop sometimes and get her to give me a little tutorial before I get going. So this one here. So you want to do more than 20% of the trees. So I want to open up the middle, opening it up. And that'll give the energy back to the tree. And you just see right here, that one's going to go over to that one. So you really, you're taking a lot. You don't want to do more than 20% of So this comes off? Exactly. And then that's it. And then they just trim these right here because they're going to branch out. And then that'll open Take this off here. Exactly. It's crossing over. Yeah. Here or the whole thing? If you're going to go that far to the thing, you can go all the way to, the, to there. Whatever. Okay, let me see. Yeah. It definitely looks like praying mantis nest. Huh. But I mean, I'm sure there's others that have similar crystals. Yeah. One of the nice things about doing the pruning is it gives you an opportunity to get into the orchard and really take a look at the trees, examine for pests, and when you find any kind of nest, you have to eliminate it and cut out any disease. You'll see us spraying alcohol on the blades between cuts. Take this out of here. The big reason is to stop it from having anything that can be moved from Anytime one plant to another plant or from one part of the out. plant to another plant that's going to spread infection. The Comoc pruner weighs one kilo, just over two pounds. It's easy to carry around, so easy to use that I was able to film while cutting. Well, we're almost done. We have about four or five rows left. We've never been able to do it this fast before. I don't know, have we ever done it in a day before? No, we've, never done it in a day. we've never done it in one day before. That's the awesome part. Yeah? Yeah. One day? One day. That is pretty awesome. <laughs> it's done. Yeah, we can turn our attention to the other things that need doing in here. So it is, it's 4.30. I have 2,744 cuts on mine. I don't know if that shows up on there. It says that I have 70% battery, 
Jafanis doesn't have a little battery counter on the side, but I have that three bars. Three bars, and that is the first battery she put in there today. I gotta say, I'm impressed. Oh, it's so much easier. It is so much easier. So much easier. If I only had five or ten trees, I probably wouldn't make the expense. Wouldn't be worth it to me. But if you've got 50 or 100 or more than that, <laughs> absolutely. 25 trees. 25? Yeah, 25 yeah. trees is worth it. Yeah, my hand doesn't hurt at all. Yeah. Tomorrow, I won't even remember that I was cutting these. So, and right. ordinarily, your hand's going to ache for about a week, a couple days anyway. Well, I'm glad I bought this one for my wife, and I'm glad I reached out to the folks at Comac. I got to say, I really like the tool. Definitely, definitely a good one to have. It's absolutely worth the money if you've got any kind of pruning to do. Welcome back to Break Hard Orchard. Today it's just me and Apollo. I've got this massive ditch that I've got to get filled in. When we were up here on the weekend, Jafana and I ran the lines for water all the way to the well around the house it's kind of stretched out down the hill it hasn't been connected in yet we did connect it into this hydrant and another hydrant up there i made one mistake i ran out of those uh pipe clamps the stainless steel pipe clamps and i said i was going to come back and put one on here and we went ahead and put the rock in there so i've got to dump that rock out of there and clear it away and put that pipe clamp on it. I think I still have another one to put on the other one, so I'm probably gonna have to do this twice, then put more rock in both of them. Then I can start thinking about filling these back in. Cut the lid and tape it on here. Um, a lot of people will say to put a, a piece of geo that uh, geo cloth on there. I don't have any of that, so what I'm doing is I'm just taking an old piece of uh, synthetic roofing felt and I'm wrapping it around so dirt can't go down in here and clog it up, and can't go in this other side here and clog it up. I just want to keep it so that it drains whenever you turn the, the spigot off. It can drain out of that valve at the bottom, out of that little weep hole. Well, I went ahead and cleared this off, got the bucket off of it, cleared the rocks, cleared the weep hole. What I'm getting ready to do now is uh, put the bucket back on, put some more rock in it cover it up with a fabric just like I did the other one. Before I do that, I need to put that stainless steel pipe clamp on here, which is the whole reason that I uncovered it in the first place. My objective for today is just to get this first trench from that faucet to this faucet closed in. My reason for that is I got an email today telling me that the power company has released this job for installation, which means it's on somebody's schedule. I don't know when, could be this week, could be the next couple weeks, but if they show up tomorrow and I've got this thing open, I'm gonna have a problem.
all that tape really has to do is hold it in place so that when the dirt falls on it, it doesn't disturb this. That dirt will hold this thing in here for the rest of my life. I've got that one in there looking good. I've got this one trenched in. It's in a nice spot. This is coming down. No undue stress on the joint. I do need to put an extra clamp on each one of these pieces right here. That impact wrench would make it a little bit faster, but since Japan is not here to help me move things from one point to another, I'm trying to travel light. All right, straighten this pipe out just a little bit and I should be good to go. Most of this rock that's in here is this sandy, I mean, it's just, it's not really even rock maybe, I don't know, some of it comes out hard enough to last and most of it just crumbly powder. I just don't want to have any sharp pieces pushing on the pipe that are going to cause it to puncture. This is pretty thick pipe. Um, it's rated for 200 PSI. That's thicker than the stuff that you find at Lowe's and Home Depot unless you order it. Well, I feel like I'm ready to go. I'm ready to put some dirt in this thing and start packing it in. Well, I've been using the, the uh, tractor and the box blade more than anything, just pushing the stuff around, trying to level it out. It is very lumpy here. I'm gonna have to get this smooth across because they're only going to trench about two feet down. And I wanna make sure that it's pretty much the contour that we're gonna plan on living with because I don't plan on doing any digging over top of it once we get that power line in. Get down here and grab my Matic before it disappears forever. This section I'm gonna leave open until we come back up here next weekend. All I'm concerned with today is this. I've gotta make sure that they don't have any delays that they can blame on me for getting that electric in. Hey, 
this is not something you want to do to somebody when they come up to do a job and you've got a whole bunch of crap in their way and they can't do it so got a little bit of work left to do here let me see if i can figure out how to get this done so i can go home for dinner As you can see, there is a beautiful sunset taking place. At least it's coloring up the trees a little bit. The sun is already behind the mountain. I smoothed this place out real nice so that it follows the natural contour of the land all the way in. Well, I said natural contour of the land. We cut that, but I got the land contoured the way I want it. Nice and smooth. They'll be coming across here, digging their trench, burying their cable, all the way over to the transformer. This hill is perfect. We'll be able to drive up here, get up to the top, do anything we need to do up there on the top of the hill. Works out really well for me. And I've had some folks uh, say every time, you know, when you dig a hole, if you don't pack it in real well, Every time it gets wet, it gets soft. Virginia clay, this mix of clay and sand, when you pack it in, it doesn't take long for it to get pretty hard. A couple of good rains, it's not gonna be soft anymore. You'll be able to drive over it no problem. I'm driving back and forth on it with the tractor and that thing weighs 9,000 pounds, almost 10,000. So it's packed in pretty good. Come on back and check us out again. Next time we're gonna be burying some conduit with electrical cable going to the well.